Hello everyone, this is Lloyd from the Airgun Lab. Today we're going to be looking at a fairly common method of securing the valve inside the air tube of an air gun. It's a fairly common method. This gun just happens to be a discovery. And here's the valve. These three little screws are what hold the valve into the air tube. Now you can see one of the screw heads right here. There's another one underneath the trigger assembly. Then there's another one on the other side of the air gun. Here's a portion of the tube that I have. And you can see the holes there where those screws go in. How they secure the valve. Now, when the air gun is pressurized, fill it up from the front end, you put 2,000 psi of air in it. All that air pushes onto this valve and tries to push it out the back of the gun. Now when you fill it up with 2,000 psi of air, you've actually got about 880 pounds of force trying to shear these three little screws off and push the valve out the back. If you accidentally overfill it to 3,000 psi, You've got over 1,300 pounds of force trying to shear these screws off and push the valve out the back. Is that anything to be concerned about? Well, we're going to find out today. We're going to be doing some testing on a setup to see how strong those screws are. What we have right here, I've got some testing, some parts for testing. I've got this piece right here that mimics the tube. It's made out of the, basically the same material, same size holes. This piece of aluminum has the same hole pattern and screw size as the valve. And we're going to secure this, this aluminum piece, this valve mock-up, inside this tube and do some testing on it. So here's the valve. I've taken the O-rings off of it. But normally it installs inside the tube, like so. And the holes line up. And the screws go in here to secure it. So here's one screw. The exhaust port. Second screw third screw. The air pressure goes in this way, tries and push the valve out the back. We've got those three screws securing it. We're going to do some testing today. I've made some test specimens that are secured in exactly the same way as the real valve. I'm going to line the holes up going to go ahead and install the screws. And I'll do a little final tightening on the three screws. You got one, two, three. This is the tube. The testing we're going to do, we're going to push on this end of the aluminum and see what it takes to push this through to break whatever's going to break here or whatever's going to give. So we'll see what happens. All right, here's our test setup. At the bottom, you can see that red bottle jack. It's a two-ton bottle jack. can exert 4,000 pounds of vertical force up at the top. We've got a piston up here. It's up inside this threaded portion filled with hydraulic oil. The piston has exactly one square inch of area. There's a pressure gauge up here at the top which reads the pressure the hydraulic pressure inside here. So if we're pushing up with a thousand pounds of force, you've got one square inch 
the style is going to read 1,000. So it'll read directly in how many pounds of force that this piston is seeing. Now our test piece is going to fit in here like so. We'll align it in a little while. And as the jack is pumped up, this piece is going to follow along with the bottom and this travel indicator will show us how much deflection we're getting. In other words, are these things starting to shear off? Is the thing starting to move or whatever's going to happen? I'm not really sure what's going to happen. The other end of this travel indicator is hooked to the piston, so we're actually going to be measuring the travel, how much this thing is going to be mashed up into there. So let's go ahead and get everything set up and we'll see what happens. Now I've set up a dummy metal tube. I'll just show you how this operates. Pump it up. First the system is going to take up the slack. If you watch the dial at the top, about 500, 600, we're at about a thousand, thousand pounds. Now, two thousand, three thousand, and four thousand pounds of pressure. I'm going to go ahead and relieve the pressure, let that drop back down. Now I'm going to go ahead and set in the real specimen. Okay, we've got our specimen set up. Our dial indicator, travel indicator is set up. I'll go ahead and pressurize this to go ahead and take the slack up. All right, we're at a thousand pounds. Zero in on the dial indicator. Got where we can see everything. We're going to go ahead and increase the force, see what happens. About 880 pounds is what the gun sees. 2,000, 3,000. Too spectacular. Indicator look like it's made a full turn. That's hundred thousandths of movement. Pressure dropped off. Now we're still holding at fifteen hundred pounds. 
Let me pump this up a little more, see what happens. Ooh, here we go. So they had started to fail. We'll take it apart and see what it looks like. Well, we know our test specimen failed, so let's see what happened. It failed at about 3,000 pounds of force, trying to push this piece through the tube. It sheared off two of the screws. This one sheared off two. And even though the uh, failure appeared to be kind of gradual, as soon as it started to fail, it was done. Uh, the hydraulic pressure kind of gives you a false sense of security there. If it was under air pressure, it would have happened immediately. So let's take a look at this screw here. Now you can see here, the screw is pushed back and this thing has really shifted down here about an eighth of an inch. Push through there an eighth of an inch. Let's go ahead and pop this last screw out. Here we go. Okay, so this head came off too. This one failed a little differently. If you look at these, this screw right here, if you can see that hole right through the middle of it. Yeah. Where the bottom of the uh, Phillips head part is. So when this thing failed, Failures will always happen at the weakest point, and here this cross section is less than the minor diameter of the thread, so this is definitely the weakest point right here. And it just so happens that that is also where the maximum shear is. So I've got all three screws are out. We're going to try and break this loose. It's jammed up. So we're going to pull it apart. You can see this screw right here. It's bent. Probably it may not be bent that much. The aluminum may be deformed. The threads on the aluminum because the pressure was this way. This one, you can see the center of the uh, Phillips head cross. Same in this one here. So those sheared off right there. And so that's how the failure occurred. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, if this had been done with pressure, maybe an O-ring would have blown out first. Maybe the, shoot, the screws wouldn't have sheared. Uh, but anyway, that's what we've got. So this is Lloyd from the Air Gun Lab. I think we learned a little bit today about how these valves are secured and one method, one mode of failure. Thank you.